If you're a foodie, you're probably wondering how to be a food influencer. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to film foodie content. I'll share what gear to use, what shots to get, and how to get them. And at the end, I'll share a 60 second TikTok that I made from all the footage that we get today. But first, we wanna get our exterior shots of the restaurant. I'm doing this first because we have a dinner reservation and it might be too dark after we're done eating. Plus, I might be too lazy to film anything after we eat all that food. And I wanna thank Sony for sponsoring this video. And I'm gonna be using their Sony ZV-E10 with their 11 millimeter 1.8 for this whole shoot. So this is where I'd get some shots of me talking to the camera and telling people where I'm at and what's about to go down. And I'll also mix in a few other shots of the surrounding area outside of the restaurant. So the audio that you're hearing right now is coming from the built-in microphone on the Sony ZV-E10. But I want the audio to sound better. So I'm gonna attach my Sony ECM-B10 shotgun microphone to the MI shoot of the camera. I'll also switch this to the super directional pickup pattern and pop on the windscreen. Here's what the audio sounds like from the built-in mic on the Sony ZV-10. And here's what the audio sounds like with the mic on. And it's focused on picking up audio directly in front of it, which is perfect for this selfie style shot. Plus, because the mic is so small and light, it doesn't throw off the balance of my gimbal. So it's almost time for a reservation. Let's head into the restaurant and then I'll show you how I film the food and eating on camera in public like a weirdo. So I always speak with the restaurant ahead of time and they were cool with me filming. I asked for a table that was kind of tucked away so I wouldn't be a distraction to the other diners. Once I get to the seat, I set up my lights and camera to film. I'll put a link to another video in the description if you want to see exactly what's in my foodie camera bag. But I've been loving this mic stand that I converted into a camera stand. And I basically just add a small adapter to the top of the mic stand and this allows me to attach this small rig camera head and it just feels more solid than the smaller tripod that I was using in the past. So the thing about filming foodie content is to just be as respectful as possible. I don't want anyone waiting on me to film anything, especially the staff. I try not to take up any more time than a normal dining experience as if I wasn't filming anything. And I even know exactly what I want to order before I get here because I know what I want to feature already. And sometimes I'll ask the staff if there's any specials and if it sounds really good, then I might order that instead. So after I place my order, I like to get some shots of the menu. And I'll do this for two reasons. One is to help me remember the price of what I ordered and maybe what was in that dish so I can share that later when it comes time to editing. And I also sometimes like to point out some of the other honorable mentions on the menu that I could recommend but didn't order today. Before I do that, I'm gonna switch the microphone to the omnidirectional pickup pattern. And this is going to change the digital signal processing of the four capsules on the top of the mic. And this is useful for recording my voice while I'm talking behind the camera. I'll literally talk to the back of my camera while I point out things on the menu as if I'm talking to the viewers who are watching the video. So here's how the audio sounds when I'm in super directional mode. And now I'm gonna switch it to omnidirectional. And you should be able to hear me much better now. Because this mode does a good job of picking up sound for the whole environment around it, I notice there's a little noise coming from the AC next to where we are seating, and you can probably hear it in this audio. This mic has a noise cut filter though. And once I switch that on, it performs a digital signal processing that uses Sony's unique algorithm to reduce the noise, and it should sound much better now. I'm gonna keep this on for the rest of the shoot. So once the food comes out, here's the shots that you wanna get. The first one is the plated dish. I like to simply slide the plated dish into the frame because it's just way easier for me to add some motion to my shot compared to trying to shoot this thing handheld and moving my camera. I'll also leave the dish untouched for a few seconds in the shot so I have some options when editing to maybe add some voiceovers or add some titles with the price and the name of the dish. I'll also snap some potential thumbnail images for YouTube at this point as well. Once I get my main shots out of the way, I'll then start to get some shots of me like moving the stuff around on the plate or like a noodle pool or cut some stuff open to just show people what's inside. I just do my best to knock out all the close-ups and food porn style shots before I eat anything so that I can cut to these later while I'm talking about them while I eat on camera. This just makes it easier so I don't have to move the camera a bunch to get shots of the food and then move it back and set it up to get a shot of me eating and talking and then back again to the food. So now that those shots are done, we can finally eat. And I'm just gonna flip my camera and light around to get those shots next. And this is honestly the hardest thing for me to film in public. So two things that make this shot difficult for me is that I'm just honestly not that confident on camera, especially when I'm talking in public. 
The other thing is I don't really know anything about food. Like I don't have this amazing palate and I haven't studied food or go to school for this. You know, I've only been doing this for like a little bit over a year. If you take anything away from this video, I just want you to know that you don't need to be a food expert to do this. You just need the right tools and know how to use them and just do it. And that's kind of the goal of this channel is just, I just want to share the things that I'm learning and hopefully it helps you. So smash that like button before I start crying. But anyways, I'm gonna try and knock this out. And um, oh, before I do that, let me uh, switch this to uh, super directional. You know what, that's actually another thing that I love about this mic is that it has all the controls right in the back, easy for me to see. And I don't have to dive into my camera menu to make those quick changes. And because it's attached to the MI shoe of my camera, I don't gotta deal with charging the battery or worry about a cable sticking out and blocking my screen or something. Anyways, so when I eat on camera, I just do my best to explain to the viewer what I'm experiencing. I'll try to describe the flavors I'm tasting and maybe the textures of the food. I could also give some insider tips or hacks on the menu that they can order and try. So you might've noticed that this camera is shooting horizontal, but TikToks are made for vertical. I got a whole other video that explains how I do that and I'll put a link to that in the description. But I'm mainly able to do that because I'm rocking this wide angle 11 millimeter lens. And this is also a great lens if I have someone else in the shot that might be eating with me. Actually, Derek, why don't you uh, hop in the shot and then we'll show them what that looks like. So whenever that's the case, what I'll do is I'll switch this to unidirectional and then that's gonna widen the pickup pattern in front of the mic. And this is perfect for multi-person conversations like this. Say something to the camera, Derek. Something to the camera, Derek. <laughs> so I don't actually film me eating the entire meal. I really only just get a couple of shots of me taking a few bites of each dish and then maybe saying a few things to the camera for like a minute or so. Then I'll just do that with everything that I ordered. And then once I finish all of my shots, I'll turn off my camera and my lights and I'll just enjoy the rest of my meal. I like to bring my own to-go containers to pack whatever I couldn't finish and avoid styrofoam or plastic containers that the restaurant might have. This one doesn't use that, but it's just a habit. Another weird habit that I have is I like to stack all of my plates and stuff and bust my own table just to make it easier for the staff to take them. And I always make sure to tip them a little extra for taking care of me and dealing with me and my camera. Anyways, I hope this video helps you make better foodie content. And here's the TikTok that I plan to post from today's shoot. These are my go-to items at the Pig and the Lady, starting with apps. This ahi toast is a must. You can definitely taste the garlic on top. I think it's like black garlic on there with um, a shoyu. Their Laotian fried chicken wings are so bomb. And this is like one of my favorite wings on the whole entire island. Super crispy, super delicious. Going for a bite right now. Tons of flavor, really crispy, light crunch on the outside. It's kind of sweet, kind of savory, super delicious. You gotta get the wings. This is called the French onion, and it's a short rib with a Gruyere fondue. There's a milk bread crouton with caramelized onions and a sherry beef broth. Look at that. Meat is so tender. It's dripping. There's like a little bit of cheese on top too. It kind of has like a pot roast taste to it. Super, super tender. So this is like a Vietnamese beef stew. And what they did is they converted it into a bolognese and the noodles are cooked perfectly. Mmm. <laughs> One of my favorite dishes on the menu, so you definitely gotta try it. 